الحمد لله الحمد لله أضعف ما حمده جميع قلقه كما يحبه ويرضاه سبحان الله وبحمده عدل قلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عدد ما في علم الله صلاة دائمة بدوام ملك الله مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح اللهم اجعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا القرآن الحكيم ربنا زدنا علما اللهم ذكرنا من القرآن ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وآناء النهار واجعل حلنا حجة يا رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أمن هو قانت آناء الليل ساجدا وقائما ساجدا وقائما يحذر الآكرة ويرجو رحمة ربه قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب وقوله تعالى أفمن كان مؤمنا كمن كان فاسقا لا يستوون صدق الله العلي العظيم Hazirin ekiram Today On this blessed day of Juma We would like to reflect Upon Ulul albab People of intelligence Who are the intelligent ones You know what We all qualify We are all eligible to be among this group of Ulul Albab, the intelligent ones, Yani Ashabul Ukul, people of Akal, people of intelligence. You don't have to go to a university to be amongst Ulul Albab. You don't even have to go into a madrasa for eight years. And become an alim to be among Sulul al -bab. Of course, the university education is good. It is important, mashallah. And the education of the madrasa, the Darul Uloom is also important, mashallah. Even much more important than the secular education. But the good thing is that you don't even have to be in a university. Or in a madrasa to be termed as the educated ones and the intelligent ones. Ulul al-Bab, many places in the Holy Quran, 
Allah speaks about Ulul Albab, people of intelligence. Albab is the plural of Lub. Lubun Albabun. And Lub means Aqal, intelligence, and Albab. In one place in the Holy Quran, Allah speaks about Ulul Albab. Let us reflect on this verse of the Holy Quran. And Allah describes, defines the Ulul Albab. Ashabul Ukul, people of intellect. Says Allah in the Holy Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Inna fi qalqis samawati wal ard. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth. When a person ponders upon the heavens and the skies and the galaxies, the planets, the stars, the moon, the sun, the Roman stars, seven heavens, and he ponders upon the earth, وَمَا and all that is upon the earth of the seas, the rivers, the lakes, the springs, the oases, the animals, trees, so many things. Reflection. Reflection upon the universe. Inna fi qalqis samawati wal ard. Indeed, in the qalq and the creation of the heavens and the earth, waqtila fil layli wal nahar. And in the iqtilaf, in the alternation and alteration of the day and the night. That the day goes and the night comes. The night goes and the day comes. The sun shines and the sun sets. Then the moon rises and the moon shines. Sometimes the days are longer, the nights are shorter. Sometimes the nights are longer, the days are shorter. Inna fi qalqis samawati wal ard. Allah, Rabbul Alameen, is saying that in the qalq, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, waqtila fil layli wal nahar, and in the iqtilaf and difference of the night and the day, the coming and the going, rotation, alternation and alteration of the night and the day, la ayat, are great signs albab for the people of intelligence for the olul albab la ayatil albab great signs that through these signs a person can achieve marifat and recognition of Allah the qudrat and the power of Allah Islam is a beautiful way of life Islam is not only about books or about school or about fatwas and laws and halal and haram. Islam is about observation, about muraqaba, meditation, contemplation, pondering. This is also ibadah. In fact, tafakkur, pondering, contemplation makes you achieve marifat, recognition of Allah. So it's a good thing to be outdoors. It's a good thing to be outdoors. Many of the mashayikh love to be outdoors. Because they see the kudrat of Allah. They use the seen to get to the unseen. So Allah says, and these things are great signs. Li'ulil albab for the people of understanding. And who are Ulul albab, who are the people of aql and intellect? Alladheena yadhkuroon Allah qiyama wa ku'uda. They are those who remember Allah. The dhikr of Allah is in their hearts. The dhikr of Allah is on their tongues. They remember Allah standing and sitting 
Wa ala junubihim and upon their sides when they lie down, when they recline. Yani fi kulli hal. That is in every condition. In every walk of life, they remember Allah. Allah is describing ulul alba, people of intellect, people of intelligence. Alladhina yadhkuroon Allah qiyaman wa kudan wa ala junubihim wa yatafakkaroon fi khalqi samawati wal ard and they ponder, they do tafakkar upon the creation of the heavens and the earth the ajaib, the mysteries, the wonders of the heavens and the earth and after pondering, subhanallah, they say and they, they declare, Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila. O oh, our Rabb, you have not created this in vain. All these things are not useless. They are not without a purpose. Indeed, you have created them bilhaq, with truth, with a great purpose. Our existence and the existence of the universe are not in vain. Subhanaka. Glory be to you. You are pure. You are holy. You are free from all faults and blemishes. That is the meaning of Subhanallah. Faqina adhab nar So therefore, save us, deliver us, protect us. From the azab, from the punishment of the fire of Jahannam, please, O oh Allah. Allah speaks about Ulul al Bab in the Holy Quran here. Subhanallah. In Surah to Zumar, 39th Surah of the Holy Quran, in ayat number 9, it's a short ayat, but what deep meaning this ayat contains. Allah also speaks about Ulul Al-Bab there in Surah to Zumar, ayat number 9. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the question. Amman huwa qanitun ana al-layl. What is the one who is obedient? Qanitun, qanitin, yani muti'in. The word qanit means muti, obedience, the one who is obedient. Your Rabb and my Rabb. Arhamur Rahimin, Rabbul Alameen, asks the question, Amman huwa qanitun, is the one who is obedient to his Rabb, obedient, submissive, mindful, reflective of his Rabb, ana al-layl, throughout the hours of the night, Throughout the hours of the night, Sajida wa qa'ima as Sajid, just like Sajid. In Sajid? In Sajida and standing. Yanif is Salat, the one who is in Salat during the hours of the night. Because the night can be a source of great blessings. And the night can be, an, can be a source of azab and punishment and disaster also. The night could be a great source of blessings because less disturbance from family and child and the stress of work and job. Just peacefulness and quiet of the night. So Allah is asking the question that the one... The one who is obedient to his Rabb and reflective and pondering upon his Rabb throughout the hours of the night, in what state, in what hal? Sajida wa qa'ima as sajid. In sajda and in qiyam, yani fi salat. 
doing what? Yahdharul Akira. Fearing the Akira. Why is he doing this? For his fear of the Akira. The next life, the afterlife is in front of him. He fears Adabaha, the punishment of the Akira. So it has driven away sleep from him. And he gets up in sajda, in qiyam, in dua, in zikr, tasbih, tilawat. Yahdharul akira, fear in the afterlife, fear in the akira, the azab of the akira. Fear with hope. That's what iman is about. Fear and hope. Wa yaruju rahmata rabbi. And longing and hoping for the rahmat of his Rabb. He gets up. In what state and in what hal? He spends the night in obedience. As a sajid, one in sajda. As a qaim, one standing in salat. Fearing the azab of the akira. And longing and being hopeful of the mercy of his Rabb. Kaufan Raja, the two sides of Iman. Iman is like a coin. On one side there is Kauf, fear, and on the flip side there is hope. Our Rasul said, Al Imanu bain al Kaufi wa Raja. Iman is between hope and fear. So he is fearing the Akirat, the Azab of the Akirat, and longing for the Rahmat of his Rabb. What is the Rahmat of his Rabb? Allah's Rahmat. Allah's full rahmat will be manifested in the next life in Jannah. In a hadith which is in Bukhari, it is said that Allah has made rahmat into 100 parts. Mercy and rahmat is into 100 parts. One of which he has sent down to the earth. And from this one part of rahmat, from that one part, mother, mother, father, mothers, fathers, Love their children, children love parents, love for brother and sister, love between husband and wife, love amongst friends, love even am amongst the animals, the mercy that the mother has for the young ones, the lion, the lioness for the cubs, the cat for its litter. All of that comes from that one part of Rahmat which Allah has placed on the earth. The other 99 parts of Rahmat will be visible and apparent in the Akirat, in the Jannah. We will really see who is Rahman and Rahim in the Akirat, inshallah. Longing for the Rahmat of Allah. In other words, longing for the Jannah of Allah because Allah's Rahmat is in full and complete, completely displayed in the Jannah. The answer to that question is understood. So is such a person who is obedient to his Rabb throughout the hours of the night in sajda and in Qiyam, in Salat, fearing the azab of the Akira and hoping and longing for the Rahmat of his Rabb, is he like whom that is understood, that has been left out? Hazrat Jalaluddin, as -Suyuti. Jalaluddin Sari, Al Mahalli Ashafi Rahimahullah gives the answer to it. He says, Kaman Hua Asin, is such a person equivalent and equal to the sinner? One who is a sinner, one who is unmindful? Kaman Hua Asin Bil Kufri Aw Gairihi, a sinner through kufr, shirk, and through other stuff? Like disobedience of Allah and breaking the laws of Allah. Are they equal? Are they the same? They can't be the same. They cannot be the same. Do you understand? Allah is saying, Kul say, O my Nabi, O my Habib, O my Prophet, say to the people, Hali yasta willadina ya'lamoon, walladina la ya'lamoon. Say, are the people who understand equal to those who don't understand? Are they equal? People of ilm and people without ilm, are they equal? Of course, what's the answer? 
La yastawiyani. These two groups are not equal. Kama la yastawi al alim wal jahil. Just as the alim and the jahil are not equal. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the ayat by saying, Innama yatadhakkaru ulul albab. Only ulul albab. Only people of aql, people of understanding, people of intellect. Only those people will understand this, take a lesson from it, reflect upon it, and get nasihat and advice. Yani yatta'iz. The commentators of the Holy Quran have mentioned on this ayat, they have said, Fil ayati, in the ayat, there is a bayan, a big bayan. Fil ayati bayanun li fadlil ilm. In the ayat is a bayan about the excellence, the virtues, and the superiority of ilm, undoubtedly. But at the same time, in the ayat is something else. Wa tahqirun lil ulama il gayril amilin. In the ayat also is tahqir. It is a degradation, a humiliation, and a lowering of those ulama who do not practice and do not make amal upon their ilm. Wicked, evil. Ma'adha Allah, Allahu mahfadna min ilmi la yanfa. Na'udhu billah min ilmi la yanfa. So in the ayat, fadlun li bayan al ilm is a bayan of the fazl and the fazilat, the virtues of ilm. Wa tahkirun, in the ayat is a tahkir, a lowering and degradation. Lil ulama il gayri al amilin, for those ulama who don't do any amal. فَهُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَهَلَةٌ In the sight of Allah, those ulama are really jahils. Ignorant ones in the sight of Allah. Despite all the years of learning, they are really ignorant ones. In Allah's sight, in the sight of the people, yes, alim. So, mashallah, ahlul ilm. But in the sight of Allah, فَهُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَهَلَةٌ They are ignorant ones. حَيْثُ Inasmuch as Ja'ala Allahu al-Qanitin humul ulama. Allah has made and declared in this ayat that the ones who are the Qanitin, the ones who are the obedient ones to Him, the ones who ponder upon Allah, reflect upon Allah, the ones who are obedient to Allah, Ana Allail, Sajida wa Qa'iman, Yahdharul Akira, wa Yarju Rahmati, Haythu Ja'ala Allah. Al Qanitin, in as much as Allah has made the Qanitin the obedient ones, humul ulama, that they are the real ulama. They are the real ulama, the ones with obedience. Wafil hadith, the commentators go on to mention that in hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yashfa'u yawm al qiyamati thalathun. Three groups of people, three categories of people, three ta'ifas will have the ability to intercede before Allah on behalf of mankind. al -anbiya, the prophets, on that horrible day, that dreadful day, the anbiya will be able to intercede. Do you know who is next? Wal ulama, thumm al ulama, then the ulama. Even the ulama, mashallah, will be given that status to beg and intercede for their jamaat, for their flock, for their people, for their ummat, for their masjid, for their gathering. The ulama, thumm al ulama, thumm al shuhada, and then the martyrs. In this hadith, the ulama are mentioned even before the martyrs. Because the ink of a scholar is holier than the blood of a warrior. And last but not least, explaining again Ulul Albab. 
concerning Allah's call, innama yatadhakkaru ulul albab. Only people of understanding, people of akl and intellect will reflect and understand. Fit ta'wilatin najmiya. In the book, at ta'wilatun najmiya, it is mentioned about Ulul Albab, who are the people of Akko, who are the people of intelligence? And I said, we, can all, we all can qualify. Little bit of ilm, of course ilm is matlu. That doesn't give us, that doesn't give us the, the green light to sit down and not acquire knowledge and say, well, nah, that's not important. No. Humul ladhina, Ulul Albab are those people in salakhu and jildil wujud. Wow, this is so deep. Let us understand it. You know how a, sh a snake sheds its skin? A snake sheds its skin, detaches itself from its skin. Ulul al Baba, those people who shed their skin also too. They detach themselves from their skin, not the physical skin, not the skin of the body, it's figurative language. Humulladina in salaku anjildil wujud. They are those who have detached themselves and shed their skin of existence. In other words, they don't exist. They don't see themselves. They look in the mirror. They don't see themselves. They see Allah's kudrat. Allahumma ahsanta khalqi. O oh Allah, you have created my exterior and made it nice. For ahsin kuluki, make my inside nice also, my kuluk. So the ulul albab, the intelligent ones, the educated ones, the people of intellect are those in salaku who have slipped out and jildil wujud from the skin of existence that they no longer exist. Such a person says, Ana la shay'un, I am nothing. Such a person says, La ilaha illallah, only Allah. Such a person negates everything. There is no power, there is no might, there is no kudrat, no existence, no being, no beloved. Nothing is important, illallah. Such a person negates everything and this comes with the zikr of La ilaha illallah. Negating everything, negate everything, negate everything. Illallah except Allah. This they come out of that skin because many of us are in that skin where that skin of ego, I, I, they see themselves. We see our wealth, we see our status, we see our bodies, we are conscious. I, me, my ego, they slip out of that skin. And they are the ones who have become dead to their desires, their passion, their shahawat. They say, no. In times of fitna, times of trial, evil, passion, desire, lust, they have become dead towards that. No longer exists. They have become dead to their desires. What is their desire now? Wa'ashu fi hawiyatihi ta'ala. And they have lived and they are living only in the pleasure and the desire of Allah. Only what Allah desires, they live for that. What I desire, what you desire, what we desire, they are dead towards that. And they have slipped out and detached themselves in salaku. And jildil wujud from the skin of existence. And that comes about by La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. As Allah says in the Holy Quran, Afaman kana mu'minan kaman kana fasiqa. Is the mu'min equal to the fasiq? La yastawun. They are not equal. La yastawun. They are not equal. So, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding of this short ayat and make us amongst ulul albab, people of intellect. Wa akiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.